We will use the colour picker tool to select appropriate colours from the image. Here I'm choosing the foreground colour and then we're going to come down here and set this to background colour and then I'm going to choose a colour green. And if we look at these swabs we can see we have these two colours chosen. The next step is to come here to select, select all, go back to select, come down here and select border and within here type in an appropriate number and I'm going to choose 100. Click OK and if you look here now you can see there's a border selected around the actual image. Click on this icon to create a new layer. You'll be presented with this template and put in here the word frame and then click OK. Then you can see that a new layer is actually created here. Ensuring that this blend tool is selected, drag from this corner to this corner and release. And now you can see that the border has been filled with these blended colours here. Now I'm going to apply another filter. I'm going to come here and I'm going to come down to noise and I'm going to choose RGB. And if you look in this region here, I'm going to increase this slightly. And you can see I'm adding noise to the colours that have been introduced into the border. So I'm going to adjust this and now I'm going to adjust this alpha channel all the way up to 100. Click OK. Allow the processing to take place. Now I'm going to zoom in on this selection here and have a look in this region and you can see that we've added noise to the actual border. But if you also look closely, you can see that we can see the image below coming through slightly. We'll now apply another filter. Go to Blur and choose Gaussian Blur. And if you look here, we've simply toned down the amount of noise. Click OK and let the processing take place. And here you can see the noise has been softened slightly. We'll now come to the View menu. Come down here to where it says Zoom. And now click on this to fit the image in the window so we can view it. Let's now go to Filter. Come down here to Light and Shadow and choose Drop Shadow. Change these settings to 20 and 20 and this to 30. Leave the colour as black. Uncheck this and click OK. Let the processing take place and we should see now there's a drop shadow along this edge and there's a drop shadow along this edge here. But there is no drop shadow here and here. Let's now go back to filters, go to light and shadow, go to drop shadow, change this to minus 20 this one to minus 20, leave everything else the same, click OK and when the processing is complete we should see this drop shadow here now. Then go to select and select none so the whole border is now selected. Zoom out so we can see the image, make sure frame is selected. Change this back to black and white by clicking here. Go back to select all, then select border, type in here 10 and click OK. Go to the bucket fill tool then change this to fill whole selection and then click in this region and then go back and select none. And you can see now we have a black edge completely around the whole frame. We'll now come to this particular layer, select it, come here to layer, say merge down, go back and merge down again. And now we just have the one layer for the frame. And if you see me switching it on or off, you can see what the image actually looks like when the frame isn't there and when the frame is there. Click here to get another layer, give it a sensible name, so we'll call this title, click OK, select this layer, come here and switch these around, choose a brush, use this brush to write into here an appropriate title for this particular image, and I'm going to write in here Roses in Picardy, because this is where the photograph was taken. Then making sure this layer is selected, come here to Filters, move down to where it says Light and Shadow, come here to drop shadow and change this appropriately. I'm going to choose 10, 10 and I'm going to increase this from 15 to 30. I'm going to leave this selected as black and click OK. Go to the view, go to zoom, come here and say fit image in window and there you can see the complete image and you can see the title in the bottom left hand corner with the appropriate drop shadow behind it. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.